Okay, time to get out of here. I've been in Norwich for about four days and it is time to make the drive over to Oakhampton, Devon. It's gonna be a good day. It's not gonna be, a, it's not gonna be a good day. Driving seven hours sucks, especially when you're doing it on your own. So, wish me luck. stopping for fuel. And while I'm here, I'm gonna give you a couple of tips that I have learned about traveling abroad, uh, particularly, I guess, in the UK, given that that's the only place that I've been so far. But there's a couple of things that I've picked up, so let me put some fuel in the car, some fuel in me, and then we'll get to it. All right, tip number one. Offline maps. When you first land in a country, you're not going to have a SIM card, so you're not going to be able to get mobile data. So you definitely want Google Maps. There's a couple of other apps as well that let you download maps. You're going to be between Wi-Fi. You're not going to have any communication means. I'll get to that in a minute. Look, you can use paper maps, and the old-fashioned way is tried and true, and it works, but being able to use GPS uh, to be able to get from A to B just makes everything so much simpler. Something I discovered is that driving is actually super disorienting. I have managed to get myself lost for an hour in Bristol. I actually found some super picturesque views, and so I suppose that's that's the silver lining of it. I want to go back there, I want to take you there on foot, uh, show you those views. That's sort of something that I've, I've realized um, in my first week here that if you're on foot you have a much much easier time of getting your bearings you can't get a bearing for where you are necessarily in a city just when you're driving solo through it so I guess my recommendation there would be try to find somewhere on the outskirts of a city to pull over read the map Google Maps is great with its offline data because it downloads literally the entire database um, it's phenomenal how much uh, it fits into such a small amount of space, but uh, if you need to know where a petrol station is or a supermarket or anything like that, uh, yeah, no, that's downloaded. Um, so well worth the, the investment of the 50 meg of storage onto your phone to download a city. If you can take public transport and you can stomach it, I don't travel well on buses, then that is a, a great option. Um, it can be really cheap, but it's only really cheap if you book well in advance. Just to give you an idea of that, uh, a train from Norwich to London, if you try to hop on the train just on the day, that's going to set you back 140 pounds. But if you pre-book a bus um, from Norwich to London, that will set you back somewhere between 5 to 10 pounds. So if you're taking public transport, just, just be aware that you may need to be booking things in advance because things get really steeply expensive the closer you leave it. Tip number two, communication. As soon as you land, you want to buy a SIM card. I went for about a week without a SIM card here and it was torturous. Uh, being limited to Wi-Fi only really, really sucks. You can get by, but if you're going to be in a country or in a region such as Europe for more than only a few days, just, just shell out. It's gonna cost you, what, $8? Um, I think five pounds is the minimum spend. It's well, well worth it to be able to get in touch with the people that are hosting you, with anyone that you're trying to catch up with or meet up with, to be able to have data when you're on the road. It just, it just makes life so much easier. So as soon as you land, uh, in a foreign country, get a local SIM. Also, make sure that uh, when you get a SIM card, uh, that your handset isn't locked. If you have your your regular phone locked to your provider back home, you might wind up in a bit of a pickle where you put a new SIM card in and it doesn't do jack. So uh, just, just bear that in mind. Make sure your handset's unlocked before you leave the country. Tip number three, money. Make sure that you've got a little bit of local currency uh, in your wallet. Do it before you leave. Make sure you've got cash because not everywhere takes card. Also, if you are going to be paying with card, be prepared to sign for everything. Uh, that's one of the biggest differences I think that I've noticed between Australia and the UK, as far as money is concerned, that the pin doesn't really do much here. You sign for almost everything. Uh, what else can I tell you? Probably not much. So that's my, what, three travel tips? Um, for now. I'm sure more will come up as this trip continues, but let's get back on the road. I'll see you at the other end. All right, see you soon. 
All right, made it. Seven grueling hours later here in Oakhampton. Um, so I'll be here for the next little while. Not entirely sure how long. I'm trying to organize with um, some friends as to other places I might be able to catch up with them. But uh, for the time being, this is this is the home base. If you've got any travel tips, um, things that I might have missed, um, or things that you can recommend, leave leave comments down below. That's it for today. So as always, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you soon. Bye.